All right, here we go. Let's get started with attic ventilation. Ask the expert. We're going to go over multiple reasons we should vent an attic. We're going to cover several main reasons. Let's start with one right now, right out of the gate. If we don't properly ventilate the attic, the life of the roof could be cut short to the tune of 24%. Based on our survey of residential roofing professionals all across North America, they revealed the life of the roof could be cut short by 24%. J.R. Lynch in Indianapolis found out pretty quickly. This roof, 10 years old, has to be redone because somebody jacked up the insulation covering the intake vents. A roof should last longer than a decade, unless a storm rolls through. So why do we vent attics? We vent attics to tackle heat in the summer, moisture in the winter, and in climates that have to deal with snow and ice, ice dams. Those are the three primary reasons we vent attics. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of today's roofs have attics that are not properly vented. We do a lot of surveys. We talk to a lot of roofing pros. And our survey revealed 77% of today's roofs are not properly vented. Maybe not even vented at all. That's a shame. Because that means in the summertime, we're not tackling the heat buildup. Radiant heat from the sun bakes on the roof. This heat then radiates into the attic space. If we don't get it out of the attic properly, it can radiate below into the living space. That's going to affect the comfort level inside the house. Any appliances that are running, air conditioners, refrigerators, floor box fans, they might have to work a little bit harder. That could affect utility bills. Meanwhile, up on the roof, the life of the shingle is at risk. Heat buildup. There's third-party research out there, and it says shingles operating on unvented decks could experience a 10% service life reduction. Now, we've been sharing this stat for years. It's that stat that triggered our own survey. We had attendees, some of them in this room, Paul, I would do your own survey. 10% sounds light. Survey roofers who are out there for a living. So we did our own survey, like I told you. 10% service life reduction, 24%, somewhere in between those two numbers. Bottom line, we're putting the life of the roof at risk by not venting it properly. Let's please change gears. We're smack in the middle of winter. The average family of four generates two to four gallons of water vapor just by occupying the house. Anybody in the room feel comfortable out loud? What would be one action, one activity that we do that generates water vapor? Yes, please, Michael. Cooking, Cooking yeah. Cooking, cleaning, doing laundry, showering. Look at the bottom of the screen, breathing. Over a gallon a day. Pets. Plants, hang drying wet clothes indoors, storing firewood inside a house. This all generates water vapor. That water vapor in the summer, that shower you're taking in July, it's a non-factor. In January, that same shower is a factor because the attic is cooler in January. In July, it's not. We want to get that moisture out of the attic in a timely manner. Don't let it settle. Here's what happens to that moisture. It's attracted to a cooler, drier place in the winter. That's the attic. It can condense as frost or water droplets drip onto the insulation. That could affect the R value, the efficiency of the insulation. In time, we might be looking at mold, mildew, wood rot, indoor air quality could be affected all because of water vapor. In the summer, heat. In the winter, moisture. And then you got ice dams. I'm not going to talk much about ice dams. You bring it up during the Q&A, please. But briefly, Energy Star. Energy Star, which is all about high-efficiency houses. 
wants us to intentionally bring in outdoor winter air into the attic. That's right, bring it into the attic to help get that attic temperature somewhat close to the outside temperature, which helps keep ice dams at bay. Bring up ice dams during the Q&A if you want. Heat, moisture, ice dams. If you don't remember anything else from this two-hour seminar, would you please buckle up and focus on these next two minutes? Balanced attic ventilation is what's going to fight the problems. Half of the air is intake, low on the roof, 50%. The other half is high on the roof, exhaust, 50%. That's a balanced system. 50-50. Does it always work out this way? No, it does not. But that's our goal if we want to tackle heat and moisture and ice dams. It's not just the vent makers saying balance the airflow. There's other parties saying it. Like who? Well, Arma, which represents the makers of shingles. Asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association. In black and white, their technical bulletin. Please, balance the attic ventilation. The NRCA, which represents roofing contractors, says, please, balance the attic ventilation. You, I told you we do a lot of surveys. We surveyed roofing pros all across North America. Hey, roofing pro, if you could give a tip to a colleague, what tip would you pass on to that colleague? Coming in at number one. Out of all 10, I tell that colleague, why don't you go ahead and balance the attic ventilation? It's time to pick a vent for the project. We're going to roll through all the vents on the street, not by brand. We don't talk brand much. This is generic category talk. Air vent, my employer, we make almost every vent we will talk about today. That's not going to stop me from highlighting the limitations of a category. We should be aware of the limitations of a category. Because not every category belongs on every roof. Match the category to the roof is our message. Two definitions. Companies that make vents talk about the performance of those vents Two ways. One, when there's no motor involved, the vent has net free area. You can read it if you want, I'm not. Every non-motorized vent has an NFA value given to it by the maker. This is our flagship Ridge Vent Shingle Vent 2. We rate this at 18 square inches per linear foot. That's our claim. Well, what that means in the street, in the field, every physical foot of this vent, you will receive 18 clear and free inches through which air can pass through. No motor, the vent has an NFA value. You put a motor on that vent, forget NFA. Now you're talking CFM. This roof mount power fan has 1620 CFM. Why do we care about NFA and CFM? You please should care. Because if we're giving guidance to a homeowner, to a client, to a client, yeah, I think you need 50 linear feet of ridge vent. I think you need two roof mount power fans. I can't give that guidance if I don't know the output, the capability of the vent. That's why. Types of exhaust on the street. Ladies and gentlemen, there are five types of exhaust vents out there. Five. Here they are. Box vents, hat vents, turtleback vents, pot vents, can vents. We call them roof louvers. Whatever you want to call them, 
They should be installed near the peak of the roof. It's going to take multiple box vents to meet code. Spread them out evenly along the peak of that roof. Limitation alert. When we use box vents on a roof, we're leaving pockets of attic that will never receive uniform flow of air. It's a built-in limitation of this category. You got a box vent, there's a break in the action. Here comes another box vent, there's a gap. Where there's gaps between box vents, the air's not moving very well. And then you got this comment. We hear from roofers who've been told by homeowners, thanks a lot, Paul's Roofing in Dallas. Love the nine box vents you just put on my roof. This is a cosmetic comment we hear from people. There are models out there that have a filter inside for additional weather protection. What's the typical NFA we can expect out of the category box vents? 40 square inches a pop on the low end, 40, a buck 50 on the high end. If we're getting 150 NFA out of a box vent, it's got some size. The thing's got some size. Then you got wind turbines, category two. We rank wind turbines a tiny notch better than a box vent because they spin. That spinning action pulls a little bit more air than a box vent. The ball bearings go bad one day, the veins bust, and that thing stops spinning. We've saddled that homeowner with a tall, chef hat looking box vent. That's all it is. Just like box vents, turbines should be installed near the peak of the roof. It's going to take multiple turbines to meet code, spread them out evenly along the peak of the roof. Limitation alert. Turbines have the same issues as box vents. The airflow will never be uniform, never. They leave gaps. Homeowners don't like the look of them, typically and it takes multiple turbines to meet code. What's the net free area? A 12 inch turbine, whether it spins a day in its life or not, has an opening on the roof that allows 95 square inches. 14 inch turbine, a buck 32. Category three, gable louvers. The bottom of the exhaust vent barrel bottom. Please rule out the other four categories of exhaust before you land on gable louvers. Here's why. Their location. You got one on this end of the house, one on this end of the house. They're not drawing well from the center of the attic. They are not. Net free area. Please shoot for triple digits. 17 is almost a joke. Category four, fans. Now you're talking CFM. Roof mount fans, gable mount fans. They both use power, electricity, to operate. The nice thing about a power fan, because it has at least a thermostat control, it'll turn on whenever we need it to, hopefully. As the heat rises in the attic, it triggers the temperature to kick on the motor. If it also has bullet point number two, the humidistat, it'll tackle the two to four gallons of water vapor that we're generating as occupants of the house. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm holding a combination thermostat, humidistat, controller. Two controllers, one box. If you don't have the humidistat feature in play, you're not fighting moisture. You're just tackling heat. What's the CFM we can expect? 1170 all the way up to 1620. Then you've got solar powered. Gable mount solar powered. Roof mount solar powered. Power, sun panel, still motorized. We make models where the panel is physically attached to the dome. We make models where the panel comes with a cord and you can put it somewhere else on the roof. Then you've got the HE15. Green box behind me and it's on the screen. Traditional power fan with some special features. What special features? Well first of all 
we call it high efficiency, H-E. Because unlike our other traditional fans, it's got a variable speed motor. Our traditional fans either turn on or they're off. There's nothing in between. This unit, thanks to the variable speed motor and the onboard computer chip, literally monitors the conditions in the attic. Hey, this attic doesn't need full throttle operation. Let's tap the brakes a bit and give it a partial output. It's sensing the conditions in the attic. And because of that, this is how it's trending, it's only been a few years, $60 savings to the homeowner in one year compared to a traditional power fan. The fifth and final category of exhaust, ridge vent. We saved it for last because we believe it's the best of the five. You've got four foot stick ridge vents, like our flagship shingle vent two. You've got rolled ridge vents. This is our peak performer, Roman numeral two. There's a lot of variety of ridge vents out there. As a category, here's why we put it at the top of the list. It's the only category out of the five that gives you that underlined word a continuous flow of air from low on the roof deck to high on the roof deck along the entire horizontal peak of the roof deck. Of course it is. It's the only one out there that's installed gap free all along the peak of the roof. You give a good intake down low, no dead spots. Power fans, Gable louvers, turbines, box vents cannot make that claim. You know what box vents and the others can claim? They'll create blue triangles in your attic. The blue triangles are the incoming intake air doing its duty and trying to get the heck out of the attic. It can't exit where there's not an exit point. Look at all that red. Look at all that unvented space we gave the homeowner. You want to lose the blue triangles? Give it a non-stop, continuous exit. We're not saying every roof out there is a ridge vent candidate. We know plenty of roofs are cut up and can't receive a ridge vent. Our message is very clear. If the roof is a candidate for a ridge vent and we're saddling somebody with these triangles, We've done a disservice to that homeowner. It's that superior of a category. Step back and assess the roof. Let's talk about cosmetics. Another feather in the cap for Ridge Vent. I can't tell you how many roofers tell us after they tell the homeowner who learned about it for the first time, you mean to tell me that vent is that low profile out of the box? Yes, homeowner. And you're going to put matching cap shingles on top? Yes. I'll take it. Sign me up. Thank you for telling me about Ridge Vent, Roofer. What's the net free area you can expect? 11 to 18. That's the general range. Some have a little bit more. That's the general range. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please zero in on the bottom bullet point? It's pretty critical in our view we will get more net free area out of a typical non-motorized exhaust system than we will ever get from any other vent. When we use Ridge Vent, we will get more net free area out of it than any other non-motorized vent. What's that mean in reality? Well, it means something like this. It'll take five wind turbines, five, 15 box vents to match 42 feet of ridge vent on the same roof. You're looking at roughly, roughly a 1,500 square foot attic. It's got 42 feet of available ridge. The Chicago roofer puts 42 feet of ridge vent up there, which is what we would recommend if we got asked. The competition has to show up with saw in hand and get busy cutting five turbine holes or 15 box vent holes. 
Oh, I want to revisit net free area, please. Net free area doesn't tell us everything about a vent. Two different vents made by two different manufacturers with identical NFA digits, let's say 18 square inches per linear foot, could perform night and day apart. Why? Well, because of the way air moves and the way a vent has been designed. Air moves through two primary forces. The first one is the weaker of the two. Thermal effect, thermal buoyancy. Warm air will naturally rise and exit out of a vent. Every vent on the street does at least this. But then you got wind. Now wind is a greater mover of air. When wind hits a house, it creates high pressure in yellow, low pressure in purple. High pressure can actually push air back into the exhaust vent. We want no part of that. Low pressure purple can actually pull air out of the vent, enhancing the vent's performance. We want purple all day long. I'm going to show you, please, how we can get purple frequently. Here's a ridge vent using no Chicago wind, still day, still air, believe it or not, just thermal effect. Warm air rises, the red arrows exit on both sides. Beautiful. Now let's bring in some Windy City wind and watch what happens to these arrows. Please remember, high pressure yellow, low pressure purple. Here comes that wind. Now when the wind blows, that yellow arrow you see is incoming wind effect entering the windward side of our ridge vent. That's a problem because whatever Mother Nature is carrying that very moment, rain, debris, snow, even back home in Dallas, we got a little dusting last week. Don't laugh at dusting. But anyway, snow entering the vent. We don't want anything entering our exhaust vent. It's an exhaust vent. As you look at the screen, folks, on the right-hand side, you've only got exhaust happening on the far right-hand side, the leeward side. You want it on both sides. So now we're going to add a little lip, a little wing. We call that an external wind baffle. Now we'll bring back the Chicago wind. Now when the wind blows, it hits the wing, the lip, the external wind baffle, and deflects up and over, creating a pocket of purple, low pressure, above the windward and above the leeward side of the vent. Goodbye, incoming yellow arrow. Good. Only red arrows exiting the vent. And that is what we want from our vent, even when the wind blows. The wind rides the roof deck, and at some point, it'll intersect the vent. Rides the roof deck and intersects the vent. If the vent's equipped with the external wind baffle, it uses the wind to its advantage. If you've come here before, and I recognize a lot of faces, thank you everyone, you know all about the Bernoulli effect and the Bernoulli principle. That's what this phenomenon is, if I can use that word. That's what's happening on the screen here. It's the same phenomenon that gives lift to an airplane, the Bernoulli effect, the Bernoulli principle, named after a scientist many, many years ago. We've done a lot of testing over the years. In the mid-90s, we did a smoke bomb, smoke candle test, in an attic with different color smoke. It's a YouTube video on our YouTube channel. More recently, we did a modern test with a smokehouse. The purpose of the test, the smoke represents the heat and the moisture in the attic. With the camera rolling and the clock ticking, we wanted to see how well does an externally baffled ridge vent balance with intake, remove the smoke versus a non-externally baffled vent. It's night and day apart. Types of intake on the street. Rectangular under eaves. 
as obvious as this is, the bigger the rectangle, the more net free area we can expect. This is an 8 by 16, 56 net free area. 6 by 16, 4 by 16. Then you've got vented soffit. Would you please spend some time and find out from the maker, the brand, hey, what's your net free area value? Because I'm about to use a ridge vent that's cranking out 18 NFA per linear foot. Are you giving me half that to feed it? Find out. If you can't find out, then use this rule of thumb. Maximize the overhang at your disposal by going fully vented soffit. Then you've got continuous soffit strips, eight or 10 feet long, PVC or aluminum. There's models for brand new construction and retrofit, remodeling. Nine net free area is the typical output for continuous soffit, nine. The nice thing about the number nine, it's half the value of a ridge vent. So if you put it on both sides of the house, you straddle the house with it, two nines equals 18. You've balanced the ridge vent. Vented drip edge. Vented drip edge blends a drip edge with a built-in soffit strip panel for homes with or without an overhang. You can use it with a gutter. Full disclosure, it's an easier install without a gutter. Nine NFA per linear foot. Nine. Two nines, 18 for your ridge vent. And then there's shingle over, rooftop installed, edge vent. It goes low on the roof when you don't have an overhang, or if there is an overhang, you could also use it. Four foot sticks, same material as our flagship ridge vent, shingle vent two. There's that number nine again, I won't beat it to death. It's got an internal drainage system, internal baffles. It's got shingle vent two's internal weather filter. Each four foot stick has a built-in end plug on each end. How much ventilation do we need? This is gonna be in your booklets, the principles of attic ventilation. It's all over the website. How much do we need? First of all, we have to know the attic size. That's what drives the amount of ventilation needed. We call attics one of two types. A traditional attic that you would step into, pop your head in, they might be storing Christmas decorations up there. We call that a traditional attic. We need a measurement for that. The best way to measure that, length times width, floor of the attic. Air vent, I'm not going in the attic to measure it. No. Can you give me another way to measure the attic? Yes. A less accurate way to measure the attic is an aerial view footprint of the roof. I don't have access to aerial views, air vent. Can you give me another method to measure the attic? I'm not gonna measure the floor. I don't have aerials. Is there a third way? There is. It's the least accurate of the three. But you can use the number of shingle squares you think you're gonna install on the roof above the attic. I think we're going to install 17 squares, 1,700 square foot attic. We need a number. At some point, we need a number to drive the volume of ventilation. That's a traditional attic. The other type of attic is a vaulted ceiling, a cathedral ceiling. We call that attic the gap, we hope there's a gap, between the deck and the insulation. We hope it's about an inch and a half deep. Two would be great. There's no measuring here. You just go ridge vent and your choice of soffit. Hit me up during the Q&A if you want to dig more about vaulted ceilings. Traditional attic, you got to measure. Vaulted ceiling, 
You need a gap between the deck and the insulation. You're not measuring. So, Paul's roofing shows up. The homeowner greets me with a smile at the curb and says, I think I got a 2,000 square foot attic. Paul's roofing. How much ventilation do I need? What am I going to say? Well, I'm probably going to open up the air vent app. I'm probably going to open up the air vent app that is both Apple device friendly and Android friendly. The air vent app has built in features, including a calculator. I'll probably run the numbers on the app. If I don't want to do, use the app, then I might go online to airvent.com and use the customizable online calculator that does not come with these Halloween colors. They were customized by Jordan Roofing in Seven Points, Texas. You can drop in your logo, drop in your color scheme, go back and add a message. Jordan Roofing chose to use this attic ventilation assessment is prepared for you by Jordan Roofing. Run the numbers, customize it, do a screenshot, send it as an attachment, it's an option. So if I don't use the app, I might use the online calculator. If I don't do any of that, that leaves doing it by hand. May I please, if it hasn't happened to you yet, you're gonna encounter that customer who's a little bit overly involved, maybe a little bit more than you would like, and they don't care that the app says 50 linear feet. That's great, Paul's Roofing. Why don't you show me right now how you got to 50? Well, I don't want to be looking confused at that moment. So we please recommend, would you have in your back pocket a working knowledge of the math? I'm going to roll through it right now. It's going to be in your booklet, and it's all over our website. Okay, homeowner, if you got to know how I got there, here we go. You told me you had a 2,000 square foot attic. My foreman measured it. He confirmed it. Good job, you were accurate. I took that number and I divided by 150. Well, where'd you get 150? Homeowner, I got 150 because the current minimum code is 1 over 150. That's where I got it. 13.3 square feet of net free area you need for your entire attic. Now, homeowner, we want to balance this with half exhaust and half intake. So we're going to divide by two. 6.6 .6 square feet exhaust, 6.6 .6 square feet intake. Homeowner, we got to talk square inches because the products in my truck I'm about to show you are made by companies that talk square inches about their vents. So let's do one more thing. We're going to convert and get out of square feet. It's not a big deal. We multiply by 144, the number of square inches per square foot. Homeowner, you need 960 square inches of exhaust, 960 square inches of intake. Now you told me when I was showing you photos, you kind of like the ridge vent. Well, homeowner, that ridge vent is 18 square inches of NFA per linear foot. I divided 18 into 960. It's about 53 linear feet. That is how I got there, homeowner. What if they want a power fan? They don't want ridge vent. You're recommending a power fan. What size? I saw the app. I saw it. it said two fans. Great. Walk me through it, Paul's Roofing. Okay, homeowner, 2,000 square foot attic. I multiplied by 0.7. Where'd you get 0.7? I got 0.7 from the Home Ventilation Institute, HVI, which recommends 10 to 12 air exchanges every hour out of our power fan. This gives us those exchanges. You need a 1400 CFM fan. I can't find a 1400 fan. Come as close as you can. 1320, 1360, drop down, use two smaller fans, bump up, go with one larger fan. You got some options. Whatever you do for CFM, 
you got to do the next critical step. You got to give the fan good intake. The formula for that, CFM chosen, divided by 300 is intake needed. You need 4.6 square feet of intake and a fan at or around 1400. Get out of square feet, convert to square inches, 672 square inches of intake and a fan at or around 1400. 